Welcome to Time to Pray. I'm the Reverend Canon Anne Clark, Associate Priest in the Parish of Wanstead in East London. And I welcome you every day at this time to a short period of prayer taken from the Church of England's Time to Pray. There is a free app available if you wish to download it and it is called Time to Pray. Today in the church calendar we commemorate um, another Archbishop of Canterbury. We had Augustine earlier in the week uh, and today it's Lanfranc who was the Prior of Lebec um, and Archbishop of Canterbury and a scholar. Lanfranc was born in Pavia, Italy around the year 1005. At the age of 35 he became a monk of Lebec in Normandy where he founded a school which rose rapidly to renown throughout Europe. In 1062, William of Normandy appointed him abbot of Caen and then in 1070, Archbishop of Canterbury. Lanfranc was a great ecclesiastical statesman overseeing administrative, judicial and ecclesial reforms at, with the same energy and rigour that the conqueror displayed in his new kingdom. Lanfranc did not forget his monastic formation he wrote Constitutions for Christchurch Canterbury, based on the customs of Lebec. He appointed many Norman abbots to implement his vision in the English abbeys. He died in 1089. And so we continue to pray for his successor, uh, Archbishop Justin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. And the Canticle of the Three. Blessed are you, the God of our ancestors, worthy to be praised and exalted for ever. Blessed is your holy and glorious name, worthy to be praised and exalted for ever. Blessed are you in your holy and glorious temple, worthy to be praised and exalted for ever. Blessed are you who look into the depths, worthy to be praised and exalted for ever. Blessed are you enthroned on the cherubim, worthy to be praised and exalted for ever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, worthy to be praised and exalted for ever. Blessed are you in the heights of heaven, worthy to be praised and exalted for ever. The psalm set for today is Psalm 84. Blessed are they who dwell in your house. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul hath a desire and a longing to enter the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you in whose heart are the highways to Zion, who, going through the barren valley, find there a spring, and the early rains will clothe it with blessing. They will go from strength to strength and appear before, the God, before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of ungodliness. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord God of hosts, blessed are those who put their trust in you. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. Lord God, sustain us in this veil of tears with the vision of your grace and glory. 
that strengthened by the bread of life, we may come to your eternal dwelling place in the power of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'd like to stay with that psalm for our reflection today. Um, it, it is a beautiful psalm and it's probably um, one of my favourites, if not my absolute favourite. Uh, I remember coming, getting to know this psalm in my teens and it was at a time when I was um, desperately thinking that I, would, I was being called to be a priest and yet I knew that that was barred to me. Um, and this psalm somehow spoke to me because it talked about the dwelling place of God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord God of hosts. My soul hath a desire and a longing to enter into the courts of the living God. And those, that, lovely, those lovely, that lovely verse with the sparrow, um, obviously I learnt it in the 16, 2, 1662 version, the sparrow hath found her in a house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord God of hosts, my King and my God. The idea that within God's dwelling place there was a home even for the sparrows and the swallows and it was such such a special psalm and it says blessed are those who dwell in your house they will always be praising you and then verse 9 for one day in your courts is better than a thousand uh, some translations um, add elsewhere for one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere but however we read that verse it is saying that just one day, one day is enough in the courts of the house of God. And then it goes on, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of ungodliness. And I particularly like that verse because my parish church uh, in my teens, uh, there were two people who spent their life, their time in the house of God daily. And I was very envious of them that they could be there all day. One was um, Jack, who was the full-time verger. Yeah, they had things like that <laughs> in those days. And then there was a woman, she was, I used to think of her as our Anna, you know, in uh, St. Luke's Gospel, when we have the presentation of Christ in, tem in the temple, and there's Simeon and Anna, and Anna spent her day in the temple um, praying. Uh, and there was a woman called uh, Agnes Aggie, who also spent her time dusting and cleaning and just being there. And this idea of being in the house of God um, felt so, so special and so important. And during this time of lockdown, we've had to get used to not being able to go into the house of God, not being able to find God in that place. We have had to find God in the temple that's within, where the Holy Spirit dwells. And for many, I know that has been painful and difficult. And each Sunday as I celebrate um, the Eucharist, I begin with these words of St. John Chrysostom. No matter where you are, you can set up your sanctuary. Just have pure intentions. Neither place nor time will be an obstacle. Concentrate your mind. Be wholly composed in prayer. God is not troubled by any place. God only desires a clear and fervent mind. And that's a good reminder that we can set up our sanctuary anywhere. And obviously many of you are doing that because if you're coming to this time of prayer, you are finding a place to tune in, whatever time of day, whether it's now live or later in the day, you are finding a sanctuary, a place to be. And that sanctuary is just as important as the one with bricks and mortar, the church. Because John Chrysostom says, just have pure intentions. We just need to have the intention that we want to be in the presence of God. Because he says, neither time nor place, so it doesn't matter when we do it or where we do it, neither time nor place will be an obstacle. Just concentrate your mind. Be wholly composed in prayer. We've been lucky, some of us, in this time of lockdown to be able to give more time to prayer. 
to not be always rushing about and being busy. For those of you perhaps who have families and young children and so on, it is always difficult to find that sanctuary, that place, because oh, even the loo isn't sacred, is it, if you've got very young children, but wherever you can find a moment of peace, a moment of quiet, that sanctuary, neither place nor time will be an obstacle, he says. Because God isn't troubled, says John Chrysostom, by any place, doesn't matter where. God only desires a clear and fervent mind. And so as we miss our places of worship, let us rejoice that we can find that inner sanctuary within. Let us make the best of this time to draw nearer to God so that we may dwell with him forever. Amen. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And during our prayers today, I'd like us to focus on, on two things. One, um, on schools as they prepare to begin to open on Monday. And also as we commemorate um, Frank and uh, the... Um, being Archbishop of Canterbury and the church as an institution and the church as a sanctuary and a place that I'm going to focus on our churches. God, we give you thanks and praise for all schools and places of learning. We pray at this time, especially for primary schools as they prepare to open where they can on Monday. And we pray especially for the schools in our own parish, for our own parish school, Wanstead Church Primary School, for Natalie, the head teacher, for the staff and all those beginning to prepare, for parents and children. We pray especially for those who are anxious about returning for all those who are not sure whether it is safe or not. For all those who know that they cannot return because it is not yet safe for them or for their family or for whatever reasons. We pray especially for the well-being of all children and for those who are most vulnerable, for those who have not had the luxury of being taught by parents who want to spend time with them and help them and guide them and have the resources to do so. We pray for those who have struggled at this time, have lacked resources and have lacked parental support. We pray for the other schools in this community, the primary schools, our Lady of Lourdes and Snaresbrook and any other schools beginning to return on Monday. We pray for secondary schools who will be returning later, for those who are moving to secondary schools, for those who are moving into the sixth forms. for universities, colleges, and those who are coming to the end of their courses, submitting their dissertations and final works. And for all who are anxious about the future, their future jobs, their future college places, And we pray especially for young people and in particular for teenagers for whom this has been a very difficult time. 
And we pray that as the lockdown is gradually lifted, we pray for their safety. Many are beginning to regroup. We pray for those who have been associated with gangs, for those who are involved in drugs. We pray for all who are vulnerable. O oh God, our teacher and our guide, in your mercy hear our prayer. And as we miss our places of worship, we pray for our churches, for the churches of our own parish, St Mary and Christ Church. We pray for our ecumenical friends, we pray also for people of other faith also locked out from their sacred spaces. For Muslims, Hindu, Sikh and Jews of this neighbourhood and elsewhere. We pray for all places of worship as they prepare to introduce worship again when we're allowed to. But meanwhile, we pray that we may find that sanctuary, that inner temple within ourselves, and that we may dwell there forever. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us pray for all who are vulnerable. And we pray especially for young people, for those who are vulnerable to bullying and exploitation, for those who may be drawn back into groups and gangs that are not good for them. And we pray for all those who work with them to help them and support them. And we pray for all those who are sick at this time in body, mind or spirit. And we continue to pray for those whom we know. Continue to pray for Avril's dad, Leslie. And in your hearts, name anyone you know who is sick at this time. God of healing in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who mourn. We pray especially for Sandra and Margaret. And we pray for those who have died, those who've touched our lives for the good and are now at rest, our own departed loved ones, and among the recently departed, we remember Jeff. And all those who have died in hospital or at home. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. In a moment of silence, I invite you to bring your prayers and petitions before Almighty God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray. 
O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and to exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we await the coming of the Holy Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the grace of the Holy Spirit enlighten our hearts and minds. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. Um, and I hope you have a very, it's again a lovely, lovely day out there. I hope you get a chance to go and enjoy the sunshine and remember that dwelling place of God is within you. See you tomorrow.